and between 40 and 60,000 Americans had died, died from the cardiovascular consequences of Vioxx. In the same ballpark as the number of Americans who died in Vietnam, died from taking this drug. That didn't work any better than the medications it was supposed to replace. So today we're gonna to look at why this happened and what we can learn from the story of Vioxx. 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 Okay, before we get too deep into the story of Viox, we need to understand why it even exists in the first place. Now, there's no shortage of horrible conditions that we've been looking for a magic pill to treat. And while each of these could be their own video, today I want to focus specifically on pain. And for pain, I want to look at two specific classes of medications, opioids and anti-inflammatories. Opioids are medications like oxycodone and fentanyl, which are extremely effective at getting rid of pain, but unfortunately they're addictive and have been responsible for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of deaths. On the other hand, anti-inflammatories are not addictive, but they're also not as effective as opioids. As a result, scientists have been trying to alter these medications to find a form that is both effective and not addictive. As for anti-inflammatories, aspirin was the first one developed, but then ibuprofen was developed as a safer alternative that happened to be more effective. Now let's take a look at how ibuprofen works, and that's by blocking two enzymes called COX-1 and COX-2, which work as a team to create inflammation which leads to pain in the body. By blocking these, you could see how someone would feel better. Unfortunately, COX-1 is also responsible for protecting the stomach, so by blocking COX-1, ibuprofen can also lead to stomach ulcers. As a result, scientists thought that if they could tweak ibuprofen to make a medication that only blocked COX-2, they could decrease the pain without causing stomach stomach ulcers. And this is exactly what Merck did. They released it as a medication called Vioxx in 1999. These initial studies that led to the FDA approval were based on short-term use that showed it was at least as effective as other anti-inflammatories. But Merck wanted more. Merck wanted to show that this medication was not only safe for long-term use, but that it could be used for other medical conditions. So they came up with something called the Vigor Study, and the goal was to show that Vioxx could be used for long-term treatment of rheumatoid arthritis with fewer side effects than traditional anti-inflammatories. In 2000, researchers published this study in the New England Journal of Medicine that compared the gastrointestinal side effects of rofecoxib, which is Vioxx, to naproxen, which is similar to ibuprofen. And the initial results were great for Merck, as they showed that Vioxx caused less than half of the gastrointestinal side effects that naproxen caused. Unfortunately for Merck, the data also showed that people taking Vioxx had over twice the risk of heart attack or stroke and they weren't expecting this. Now Merck tried to make up a couple lies to explain this. The first was that they said that naproxen had a protective effect against heart attack and stroke. And when comparing Vioxx to that, it made it look higher, which was just simply not true. And second, they said that the risk was only elevated in people with known heart disease. And this was later proven to be untrue as well because they left out three heart attacks all in the group of people that were considered low risk. Now this was in 2000, and despite the fact that they lied about their data and the risk was real, Vioxx stayed on the market. And over the course of the next few years, several independent researchers demonstrated that this risk was in fact real. And it all culminated in 2004 with the approved study. Now this study was meant to show that Vioxx could be used to prevent colon polyps, which are early stages of colon cancer. But unfortunately, the results showed that when compared to placebo, Vioxx carried twice the risk of heart attack or stroke. Now Merck tried to argue that this only happened after 18 months of usage, but still Merck had no choice but to take Vioxx off the market. And this officially happened on September 30th of 2004. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done. Analysis showed that over 20 million people had already taken Vioxx. And of those 20 million people, they estimate that there was about 88,000 to 139,000 heart attacks. And of those heart attacks, 30 to 40% were fatal. By August of 2005, there were already 13,000 lawsuits filed against Merck for Vioxx. And in November of 2007, Merck lumped all the lawsuits together and created a settlement fund of $4.85 billion, which at the time was the largest drug settlement ever. 
in the United States. So what can we take away from the story of Vioxx? Well, I've come up with three things. First, we have to be cautious of all studies where someone's set to make a lot of money. As it turns out, the researchers are the only ones that see the raw data, and therefore they can manipulate it. The only way that anybody else is able to see that raw data is if that study is involved in a lawsuit. Second, we have to understand that with any medication, there could be unaccounted for risk. And the longer you take a medication for, the more likely you are to experience one of those risks. And finally, the closest thing we have to a magic pill right now for most chronic diseases is a healthy diet, a good amount of exercise, and getting enough sleep. And fortunately, these don't have negative side effects. And that's all I have for the story of Viox. As always, I genuinely appreciate your support. With that being said, I have a new podcast out. It's called The Prescription Press, and it's where I break down medical news stories and topics so that we can get information to live healthier and happier lives. I'll link it above to YouTube. Apple Podcasts and Spotify will be down in the description. I'll see you next time.